at its heart, Kalk contains a functional programming language. So that's where we're going to start with learning how to use Kalk, the functional programming fragment of it. In Kalk, we can actually code up most of the things you're used to and from regular programming languages from first principles. In other words, from scratch by ourselves. Let's get started with an enumerated type for the days of the week. So here we have an inductive type definition for the days of the week. It starts with this keyword inductive. Uh, this is another piece of the vernacular commands in Kalk. Here we're registering a new definition for a type. We're saying that day is the name of that type. So we now have a type called day. Uh, and we say colon capital type here to say that in fact day is a new type. We write colon equals to provide the rest of the definition after that name and type. Uh, so this is perhaps a little different than many other programming languages where you might write something like just equals. Uh, I happen to like this syntax. Uh, it's a way of saying is defined to be. So the inductive type day is defined to be the following. And that's on these lines. Think of this as like a variant or an enum from other languages that you might be used to. We're simply giving all of the seven different possibilities that a day could be here. It could be Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday and so forth. Uh, now, there aren't any capitalization restrictions here on the names of these. Uh, you, you might be used to that from other languages like OCaml. That, that restriction doesn't exist here. Uh, so we have a vertical bar to separate each of these pieces of the definition and a period to end it. As you start getting used to clock, uh, sometimes one of the things beginners forget to do is add the period in. So if you ever start to getting weird error messages and syntax and things don't compile right, one thing to check is maybe whether you forgot a period somewhere. OK, so I'm going to compile to this point in the file, as we saw in the previous video. Now, right away, one of the things that caused is my Emacs environment here changed a little bit. Uh, I got a response down here in a separate window at the bottom to say things like day is defined. Some other things also automatically got defined. We'll learn a little bit more about those in later chapters. They don't matter for now. Uh, and then it sort of adjusted and scrolled the view, which is a little annoying in these videos. Now, in order to keep this font size visible, I have to make the font very big here and um, arrange Emacs such that it provides these output windows in a place where you are going to be able to see them as you are watching the video. If I'm doing this by myself, I tend to work in this three windows layout mode, uh, which is actually, well, I usually use smart, um, but smart decides how to lay it out based on the screen real estate that's available. I would usually use the one that is actually hybrid, which looks like this, uh, in which you get uh, an entire buffer over here that you can sort of see a little bit more of. You can see the output window here. The problem is going to be, of course, I am going to be covering up this output window uh, in these videos if I don't put it somewhere else. So that's why, just for purpose of teaching, uh, I'm going to do this in horizontal, oh, sorry, not horizontal mode, uh, in vertical mode like this most of the time, where we get uh, the buffer that we're editing, the output window, and then something else called the goals window in between. We're going to see soon enough exactly what that is for. OK. So with that out of the way, we've defined a type now uh, for days. Good. What about writing functions on that type? Well, here's a function for the next weekday after a given day. This is a feature called pattern matching. Pattern matching is one of the really elegant, great features of functional programming. Uh, if you haven't learned about that before, now's a great time to learn about it. Uh, you might also want to go off and learn a little, bit, a little bit of OCaml at some point, or Haskell, or Scheme, or any other functional language. In this case, the pattern matching we're using in Kalk looks a lot like OCaml. No surprise, there's similarities between the languages. Uh, Kalk itself is even implemented in OCaml. So we're defining a function here, the next weekday. So notice this begins with a vernacular command, capital D, definition. So we're defining this name next weekday. It's a function. It takes in an argument that we've put in parentheses here. The name of the argument is D, and we've said that the type of that has to be day. And then this function is going to return, its return type, that the, the type of the value it returns is going to be a day as well. And we define that to be, with colon equals, a pattern match. So we're going to match D, the day that comes in, with one of any of the possibilities that it could be. Is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? Wednesday? And so forth. 
Each of those cases, or they're sometimes called branches, each of those branches is separated by the vertical bar here. And there's a right arrow to say what to do if D happens to be Monday, or if D happens to be Tuesday, or if D happens to be Wednesday, and so forth. Now that right arrow is being rendered in a very nice way by Emacs here, a very pretty symbol. That's because I have something called prettify symbols mode on. Uh, but if you look down here at the bottom, when I put my cursor on the double arrow, it says that double arrow is a prettified version of the ASCII symbol equals greater than. So that's how to type it yourself. And no matter what cock ID you are using, or even if you're just using a plain text editor or typing in your browser, just write equals greater. And that will become, uh, if you have prettified symbols, this uh, symbol that looks like a double right arrow. In fact, if I backspace over that, you can see if I type equals, I've just got equals. And then if I type greater, ah, now it's become prettified. Okay. So in the case that D is Monday, we're going to return Tuesday. The case that D is Tuesday, we're going to return Wednesday and so forth. Uh, when we get down to Friday, what is the next weekday after Friday? Well, it's not Saturday, it's not Sunday, it is Monday. And the same for the next weekday of after Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so let's compile that definition there. And now we see we get a response, next weekday is defined. Great, we've successfully defined that function. Having defined the function, let's look at how to use it. So if we wanted to compute what the result of applying the function next weekday to the day Friday is, we can use the vernacular command compute, which will tell us what the output of that function would be. So you can see in the response window down below uh, that it is Monday, which has type day. And we've just recorded that here in a comment as well. What's the next weekday after the next weekday after Saturday? Well, it'd be after Saturday would be Monday, and then after Monday would be Tuesday. So we can compute that and the response window. Uh, in this case, I actually didn't see what the response window printed. Uh, sometimes this happens. There we go. I had stepped a little bit far, too far past it, past that comment. So let me get just to that point of that period. Uh, the output is that Tuesday is the, is the right answer. OK. Now, if you wanted to, you could even record almost like a unit test would be in some other languages. You could sort of record as a unit test or as um, a mathematical example. You know, sometimes you're reading math papers, right? And they have like proposition, theorem, lemma. Sometimes they say example. Well, this vernacular command example is exactly like that idea. Just recording an example here of what um, the output of the function should be. So the next weekday after the next weekday uh, of Saturday should be Tuesday. And we're going to give that example a name. We're going to call that test next weekday. All right, so uh, the syntax for this, the, could put a space in there if we wanted, uh, is that there's a vernacular command here, example. And we're giving the name of the example. Uh, now, we don't always give names to examples in math papers. Sometimes we give equation numbers, though, and that serves kind of the same purpose. So we're going to give a name to this example, colon, and then what the example is. So I can compile that. Right away, we have something new that has happened. For the first time, we have something showing up in this goals window. We now have a goal to prove that the next weekday of the next weekday of Saturday is Tuesday. Now, you can see the way that this goal is set up. There's kind of a big line here. And then below that is what we're trying to prove. Uh, right now, we don't have any assumptions to work with. You may be used to doing proofs from a math class. Sometimes you reason from assumptions to prove something. If we had some assumptions, they would show up above the line here. None right now, so it's empty. OK, so how do we prove this? Well, a lot of getting used to working with Cock and becoming a master at it is understanding the tactics that Cock uses in order to help you prove statements. Here we're going to introduce our first tactic. We start off the proof with the vernacular command proof. As it turns out, you can actually leave that out. Uh, but stylistically, it's nice to have it in because we as humans are used to seeing proofs that start with the word proof. And our first tactic will be simple, S-I-M-P-L. No, there is no E at the end of that. This is actually to simplify the goal that we're trying to prove. So when we run simple, look at that. The left-hand side of it did, in fact, simplify. Let me undo that so you can see it again. Right, so we had next week's day of next weekday of Saturday. Now, when I simplify that, those function applications occur, and the left-hand side simplifies down to just Tuesday. Great. But now I need to show that Tuesday equals Tuesday. Well, that seems obvious, right? 
there's a tactic specifically for proving that x equals x for any x, and that is the reflexivity tactic. Uh, indeed, that's based on the notion that uh, equality is a reflexive relation. OK, so reflexivity, run that tactic. Ah, and now the goals window is empty. I have no more subgoals left. And the response window, in fact, gives that clue to me. No more subgoals. Finally, to finish off the proof, I run the vernacular command QED. Of course, it stands for a Latin phrase. You may be used to writing that at the end of proofs yourself, sometimes with a box and indeed in some prettify symbol modes uh, for cock, that QED will get turned into a box. Uh, my colleague at Cornell, David Grease, likes to joke that QED really stands for quit and done. So there we are. We're done with this first proof in cock.